Hey, everybody. Thanks for listening to Raw Knuckles Podcast. Please like, follow, and subscribe. Is this the first time you're going back since, since a, in a long time? I mean, I guess since the no, season. I went back home uh, like three weeks ago to graduate from high school. That's kind of you funny, did. but yeah. <laughs> yeah. That it's is not hilarious. What every <laughs> NHL player goes home for, yeah, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When I stepped on the ice, I never backed down and I never stayed down. And I was <laughs> vicious and I was malicious and I don't care. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. Thanks for taking the time, buddy. I really appreciate it. Hi, just say hi to Tim. Hey, Tim. How are you? All right. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, thanks for having good. me. Good. How you doing? Pretty good. Going home yeah, tomorrow. Good so. to see yeah. Oh, you do? You're heading back to yeah. uh, Kosice. Yeah. Yeah, we got it down. Kosice. Is that yeah. how you say it? Yeah, Kosice. Yeah. Kosice. Yeah. So... Anyway, good to have you on the Ron Knuckles podcast. Uh, listen, God, I remember going uh, to the draft. The night before the draft, uh, I had talked to Jeff Gorton a little bit. And I said, hey, give me the scoop. Who are you going to draft? You know, And he's like, oh, I'm not going to say nothing. Then I was there the night of the draft, and I saw him again. And I said to him, Jeff, come on. I'm a Boston guy. You're a Boston guy. Who are you guys going to draft? He said, Knuckles, I'm going to tell you one thing. We have to get bigger. Yeah. <laughs> and I said, okay, now I know who he's going to draft. So I was not surprised when it happened. But you were sitting there with mom and dad. And I went up and I remember we took pictures. You took some pictures with the old timers. And I got next to you. And I'm like, God, this kid is huge. Unbelievable how big he is. And I looked at the kid right. And I looked at all the other kids. And you certainly stuck out in the crowd. As you sat there waiting, did you think in your mind, I'm going to go number one? Or did you think the other kid was going to go number one? I mean, I wanted to go number one. And I, and I had a meeting that morning with Montreal. So it was kind of like, oh, maybe, maybe. But yeah, I was, yeah, I was still shocked after they said my name because obviously like, I didn't expect it, but I was hoping for it more. And yeah, because pretty much I I was, I don't know, ranked first in like one rankings before a draft. And yeah, that's it. So it's like, yeah, I would be happy, like, I would be happy getting drafted. So it's like, yeah. Yeah. So to get drafted number one, obviously, that's so cool. Sitting there with your mom and dad. Jeez, uh, I can't imagine how proud your mom and dad were. What? When they called your name, did dad say anything, mom say anything, or did they, no. they just hug you? No, I think they were just... all in a shock. Like, my dad didn't say anything, and it's, like, if you, if I watch the videos from before, he's just, like, looking around, like, oh, what's happening? <laughs> and, yeah, my mom was crying already. So, yeah, yeah. there's nothing she said, but, yeah, it was, it's a, it was a great moment, not only for me, but also for, for my parents, because they, they are the ones who made it happen as well. Yeah. Did you um, know much about Montreal or like what team did you grow up uh, liking? Were they one of the teams or nothing about them? No, so I was, because uh, I liked Marian Hosa. So I was growing up, growing up watching Chicago Blackhawks and yeah. pretty much I started to play when they won their first cup. So that was the team that I was watching, watching the most. So it's funny you say, oh, your parents are responsible for, you know, you becoming an NHL player. But when I look at your your track and growing up and playing hockey, uh, I I often have a hard time to believe that you were living on your own at 14 years old and then again at 16 in Liga. Now, I say that, it, it, to, to me, it impresses the shit out of me because most 14-year-old, well, 16-year-old kid could not – go off and live on his own. The maturity level you have to have to do that. It's unbelievable. It's almost like your parents kicked you in the ass and said, get out the door, go play hockey. But, <laughs> yeah. but like, yeah. how, how difficult was that when you first went away from home? Was it with the Red Bull team at 14 yeah. in Austria? Now, when you went away on that team, 
what what was your setup like what what did they do did you live in a dorm did you live in a home so so first time when i when i left because i was like i when i was 13 turning 14 kind of i was thinking like if i want to play professional or i want to just play for fun and stuff and i always wanted to go play somewhere else it's not because like i didn't want to stay home of course you want to stay home when you are 14 because all of your friends are growing up and everything but yeah, I I thought like it's it would be a good idea to try something else because you can always come back and but I mean if once you leave you don't want to come back but you can always come back so yeah I was like yeah let's try something and yeah first I went to Red Bull so it, that's like if even if like listeners just Google up like Red Bull Salzburg Academy it's like big like there's like two ice rings there's like six soccer fields and you pretty much live and leave go to school and do everything in one place you don't even have to leave yeah. the academy yeah so that was kind of like yeah i had my roommate and like yeah of course you have to do your like wash your clothes and everything but yeah, there wasn't yeah. anything anything hard because everything is under one roof but yeah. yeah i was there just for three months so and then i went to check and then that was a little harder because yeah all of a sudden it's not as nice and you live in like a I don't know how you call it in English, but like school internat. So there was like normal students, and then there was also hockey players. So that was that was a little yeah. bit harder, but yeah, I had fun. Okay, okay. So you you go, you get your feet wet there, and uh, when you went to Liga at sixteen, you you got your own place, and you lived in your own place. You had to cook your own food, do all yeah. your own chores, get to the rink on your own, like like. <laughs> How was that? Did you, did you get lonely? Did you miss home? What What was that like? Yeah, well, I mean, always you always miss home. But yeah, so when I went there when I was 15. And there was every single year, there was also like some other Slovakia, either playing like in some other junior team or so. We, there was always someone from Slovakia, some Slovak player in the town. So at least we could like talk our own language and everything. But yeah, I mean... It's kind of hard first time, like calling my mom how to cook chicken and everything. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> how are but, yeah. At 14, at 14, 15, were you like always this big? I mean, what did your parents feed you? <laughs> and uh, yeah, I mean, you, I, I'm anyone... like <laughs> same tall as since like, yeah, pretty much 13. I didn't grow much wow. since then. Yeah, I don't know. I had some special chicken probably. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. growing up in Kochitsi, and and obviously uh, hockey in Slovakia and Czech, it's big. Hockey's big. I've been to Bratislava. I went with the Stasnys. I went over there, and I, I certainly loved that experience going there. But growing up there, the minor hockey, what was that like for you? And and how did you really start playing hockey? Your parents were both – were they both athletes, mom and dad, right? No, no, just my mom. No? Just my mom. Just mom. Your yeah. mom was an athlete. Now, uh, like getting into hockey, who got you into hockey? Uh, was it something you went, hey, I want to play hockey? Or did dad and mom get you going? Yeah, that's a funny story because I had my friend and his father was a hockey coach. So and always during the winter when I was like four or five, I had skate. So I would go like skate on a lake and something. And I wasn't thinking yeah, of playing. I was just skating for fun. And like my parents know a little bit how to skate. So they went, well, more, my mom went with me and yeah. And so then one day, like, my friend was just like, yeah, I'm going for a training. You want to come? Yes. And then, then I went there and I had, like, I didn't know what to bring. So I brought this, like, skiing helmet. So, like, you know, you need to have, like, <laughs> age at that age. So I was, like, completely lost. <laughs> yeah, but then, yeah, since then, um, I never left the rink. Yeah. Who would you say you pattern yeah, like do you pattern your game after like a Marion Hosa, like who you looked up to, or is there someone you specific that you kind of try to play like? I mean, I would love to be the same player as Marion yeah. Hosa was. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, he was great both both ways. So yeah, of course as well about him, but also like you need to watch new like new guys and players that are playing now as well. So obviously you're you're a big, big kid. Uh, your size is such a asset for you. Now growing up, were you always the biggest kid on the team? Yeah, always. Yeah, heavier, always bigger. 
Yeah, every time. How much did you weigh at birth? Were you a small baby or a big baby? I had like 5.5 kilos or no, that's too much. 4.5, I think. <laughs> yeah. 4.5 kilos. Yeah, like uh, I was bigger, bigger, one of the bigger kids, yeah, but nothing too crazy. Okay, so you grew up always the biggest kid on the team. Uh, when did you, I guess, growing up playing, when did you realize, like, oh, I love hockey, and then, you know, this is all you had on your mind. I want to play hockey, play hockey, play hockey. I would say it's like since first time I went to the rink, like, I would, I would, I would always, like, because we used to train, like, 6 in the morning, whatever, so I was the one, like, waking up my parents and, like, I was always wanted to go and of course like then we went for a couple like tournaments in North America, the P V tournament and like few tournaments in Chicago and it's like you see you see the other side of the world and like hockey here and I I was loving it every single time I went here, so I was like, Yeah, I have to make it one day. Yeah, you have to make it one day and yeah. obviously um getting drafted number one overall by the Habs was a yeah. surprise, but here you are at 18 years old. Now, you've had, certainly, you go to uh, league and play against men in fin Finland, play in that big rink, right? A bigger rink in Europe. Um, that adjustment, playing against all men in Finland, how was that for you the first time? Was it overwhelming, or did you, were you able, did it take your time, how long did it take you to adjust to that, playing against men? It was kind of hard because I, I, so my first men's game was for a national team, Slovak national team when I was 16. So I went to play for a world championships, but I was, yeah, few games I was lost. Then I had better game. Was, was no that game. 2021? Sorry. Was that 2021? Yeah, I think it was, yeah, 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 2021. That's like my first ever, I never played, I never even trained with a men's in Finland either. So I had some experience, but then I came to Finland and it was again kind of hard because I played few games in junior team. I played few games in a men's team, so it was like up and down. But I would say like the biggest like when I finally felt good with the men's was when the Olympics was where, and after that yeah. tournament I was like, okay, I feel like I I can play with the men and I'm man wow. fine. <laughs> you scored seven goals, seven goals in seven games. You end up winning the bronze medal, right, in the Olympics, uh, which was incredible. And and being that young guy on the team, like in the you know the older players, did they, they kind of treat you like a kid, the little kid, the young kid, or you know, did uh, they? How long did it take to you get to get really accepted by them? Yeah, so the very first time at the World Champs, it was kind of like, yeah, he's still kid, like we're trying to help him. But I think it always comes like when you start scoring and everything, like you get like your little bit more credit and you're not a kid, yeah. like even the older guys come talk to you. And because, I mean, if yeah, you play with in a power play with them, so they got to talk to you more as a friend. So yeah. I would say like once you start scoring with the man, then they, like even their view changes at, at myself or like whoever yeah you're right i played in the league of my i played for yokerit for two years um and you know they're in the khl now but like how yeah. was uh how was that league and did that help prepare you uh for north america and obviously turku is that where you were Tur tps yeah. right that was yeah. a good city did you learn any of uh did you learn any of that language it's tough yeah i know uh i understand a little bit I'm very shy to say something, but for example, when I, yeah, we have Armia and Ilonen on a team. So when I always come and just try to say something jokes in Finnish that I know. So, and sometimes I also understand when they talk between each other. So, but yeah, it's a, yeah, it's hard language. Yeah. You don't want to spend your time studying that. But did I, uh, and then this uh, other question about the league itself, was it, um, would you say that it had some similarities to the North American style game? And because it, it did when, when I played, it was very, it was, the, it was considered the best league outside of North America and, and they were very North South, you know, the Finns, I love the way they play. Um, what, what kind of style was it when you played? Was it like, um, was, you know, Puck possession, I know playing on the bigger rink, it's a lot, you got a, like a half a second extra with the puck and 
when I came over to North America, I struggled right away just because the timing of stuff, it was so much smaller. What was your yeah. experience over in that league? Yeah, so I would say like it's completely different than playing here because here you have 32 teams with 32 different styles of playing. And there you, everyone is playing like a, the trap that is like standing in a neutral zone and you just <laughs> all five guys you swing down and you just try to try to go into the five guys switch in here like everyone's like they're picking the guys with the speed and everything so yeah there is i would say nothing similar between finnish hockey and <laughs> nhl yeah because wow yeah. you know that surprised me i heard about that too a lot of teams over there in the big rink they started doing the trap in europe and mm -hmm. that was never the way no. you know it's almost that puck possession game was such a big thing and then all of a sudden i hear they're all playing the trap how was that for you when you got there like what what is this oh. standing still oh that's so tough just standing oh. and sometimes that will happen like i would love to go to four check but you just have to yeah, stand be you just have to listen yeah. to what they want to play and you have to be on the same page with all other five guys so that's kind of hard it's kind of sometimes holding you back but it's always good to know how to defend better so i would say Finland, like, because I was, like, terrible at defending before. Yeah. I think the, the what I got most in Finland, obviously, like, all the skills and everything, but the defensive, like, defending defensive side of the game, that's, I think, what I got most in there because, yeah, you just defend a lot over there. Well, that's surprising. That surprised me that you did, and that's good that you did. You got a taste of that part of the game uh, when you were there. So, you know, I was wondering, uh, did you go, you went to the NHL Combine? Yeah. You went to yeah. the combine. When you went to the combine, um, what, what what was some of the 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 tests that you excelled at? And then, you know, you weren't. I'm. Your English is great, by the way. But how difficult was it when you had to speak with some of those general ma managers when they interviewed you and they wanted to talk to you? How, how difficult was that trying to get your point across in English when they're asking you all these questions? at the combine yeah i mean uh so first i i didn't do any tests at the combines because the world championships ended like like not even a week ago like four days before the combine the world championship ended okay. so i was in terrible shape so yeah me and the <laughs> uh the other slova guy shimon Nemets, we asked to not to do the test because it just would like wouldn't make sense if i do sit, like four pull-ups and i know i can do for example 10 like i'm not yeah i i could can give my best so like it's it can it wouldn't help me if i didn't do it yeah. 100 percent shape the other question yeah no i i mean i know my english is like kind of okay i can talk and everything but i had sweaty hands on the, on the, yeah. all those <laughs> interviews yeah and it's it's kind of funny to see like all the different teams like you come to some team and they're just like throwing a paper balls to the to the, like trash because they don't even have a pick in the first round so yeah, yeah it's kind yeah, of funny yeah. and then you come to montreal and you have like full room of different people and everyone does something else and you're just like looking around like there's a camera over there like whoa. yeah yeah so when when let's say you're sitting down with Montreal and they're asking you all these questions, what, 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 I guess, what was probably the most difficult question for you to answer that they asked you? And if you can think back to that time, I, yeah, I don't remember many questions, but I just remember like, what type of animal would you be? And then it's just like, <laughs> oh, like. I don't want to say something bad because they can like connect it like how the animals are like. Oh, yeah, you don't want to say something so. Like, oh. You didn't say you were a skunk. No, 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 no. So what animal did you give? I said I'm a wolf because yeah, everyone says lion. Yeah. Everyone is a lion, yeah. so I want to change it up and a lion. Uh, wolves they attack together and yeah yeah i, I like what that. would you say what would you have said nux what animal are you um me um <laughs> if they asked me um 
I'd say you don't you don't want to know what type of animal <laughs> I am. Yeah, You'll see I, a I, I would have I would have said pigeon. <laughs> I would have been like I'm a yeah. pigeon. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh. You'll see when I get to training camp what type yeah. of animal I am. <laughs> uh, Some of so, like guys said that one guy I know he said that he's a monkey. Uh, he actually is. It's crazy yeah. and just like that's <laughs> so much energy. So that I don't know if that helped, but yeah. Oh, so, amazing. yeah, it's funny. Back when I was drafted in those days, they they never did the interviews. They never did anything like that. I didn't even go to the draft when I got drafted. But um, so, so did you get a feeling after those interviews, the teams that were kind of inter- – so there's got to be like five teams, the top five, because you would have been in the top five no matter what. But – did you get a sense that one team really wanted you other than the Canadians? Yeah, no, none of the top five teams, like where everyone was just like called, like they didn't show anything. And it was more the teams that, that didn't have like top okay. five or top 10 pick. And they were just like, yeah, we we're like so chill. And like, I had probably like better talks with the teams that were top 10 because and then yeah. the teams that more were relaxed. top 10. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, more but relaxed, yeah, no one yeah. showed anything. It was kind of, I was yeah. like, whoa, I don't know where I'm going. I was like, do I get even drafted? <laughs> you, really? Yeah. You thought that for a second? No, 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 no. <laughs> you just, saying, you just then feel you like, first why, why <laughs> they do, yeah, why they don't show anything? Like, they can say something at least so I feel, so you feel mm-hmm. better. But, mm-hmm. So, yeah. you get drafted. Um, obviously go up on stage there and what was that like for you pulling that Montreal Canadiens jersey on for the first time and standing there with the owner of the team uh, uh, Kent Hughes and Jeff Gordon like uh, how did you feel when you you got up there with them and did any of them say anything to you like oh welcome to the team we can't wait what was that like getting up on that stage number one overall yeah, I, like, I um, honestly, I don't even remember anything because I was just so in a moment and I was just like, what's going on? And I didn't even listen. I didn't even, like, hear anything. I was just, like, so in, enjoying it. So, I yeah, I don't remember much. But I think, yeah, everyone just said, like, welcome, welcome to the team and happy to have you and everything. But, yeah, at the moment, you yeah, I don't remember much from who was saying what. Do, like well, did back nice ho- did back got... home in back home yeah. in Slovakia did they like did, was that kind of like did everyone know that you were going to be going like in the draft like and so for my question would be like did, did any of the, cause there's a lot of good Slovakian hockey players Marion Gabrik hosts all these guys did any of them did you talk with any of them did they give you any advice uh, for what you were doing mm, actually not really I've, a few times I went on the Marion Gabrik podcast so like we talked over there. And we talk a little bit like also of like online, not online, but yeah, no. And I think last year was like first time ever that uh, there was a draft like broadcast on a Slovak TV. So yeah, a That's lot awesome. of people were watching back home as well. Cause yeah. it's not only so, me, but there was just two other guys yeah. got drafted. Yeah. I was going to say that there certainly wasn't only you, there were a lot of other guys, but you get drafted and then uh, your good friend, um, Philip Messar, Messar, yeah. uh, gets drafted by the Canadians too. Uh, were you like, when he got drafted, I mean, you're already happy. You're number one overall. Mm-hmm. The Habs pick you. And how happy were you that Philip oh. ends up getting drafted too? Oh, I was so happy. I think there is also like a video of me because I was just like live on Twitch, standing in a locker room and like answering a questions or something. And, yeah, they. I didn't know like what pig it was because I had so much stuff to do that I was like kind of lost in time and everything. Yeah. But they just told me, yeah, we. They just some guy just came to like, oh, yeah, we just drafted some another slow. I'm like, who? And then they say him. I was so happy because, yeah, me and him we are like growing up playing against each other since we were kids and everything. So I I know him like really well, and I was just so happy that it's me and him and that we have actually chance to play together one day after all these playing against each other. Yeah, that's an awesome story. Um, now, 
so Philip gets drafted. You go through all the interviews, do all that stuff. Uh, did you come to Montreal right away, or did you go back home? Yeah, I, I stay. I stayed for a little bit because we had the development camp. So I I was here yeah. for like another another week, and yeah, then I then I went home. Then you go home, and and, and now when you come back to Montreal, they put you up in a hotel. Uh, did you live with a family right away? No, I was in uh, Canadian Towers, right by the Bell Center. Yeah. For like for like a month, and then when the training camp started, I yeah I went in a brossard to the to the hotel where everyone was staying. And after that, like when it was closer this season and they were like, okay, like, yeah, we found a like family for you if you want to like go meet them. And yeah, I was like, yeah, why not? Can try that after all these four years alone, having yeah, yeah. someone at home. <laughs> yeah. Did you, did you know anyone on the team? Did you know any of the players on the team? Uh, no, not really, no. It's, so, but it was nice yeah. for us because uh, me, Arbor, and Gooley and Mesher, we were all together here since like August 15. We all came the same like train here before the camp, same time. So it was we were kind of hanging out together most of the time. So you you got to know a few people, and uh, that probably eased the fuel a little bit. Now before training camp, and you know, now you've been here for a year, and you're 18 years old. You're gonna um come to training camp you come to training camp have a good camp i remember the guy from uh ottawa i forget the defensive name but you were cutting across the middle and he stepped up to hit you and he looked like he got in a car accident okay (laughs) after you ran into him he he's like oh oh, okay that kid's 18 years old but he's a big 18 year old kid yeah I, i mean he was hurt after he hit you yeah um so that training camp, that first training camp coming this year, the end, that piece of it, did you, because there's all sorts of talk, you know, here, the media, everybody's talking, uh, should your eye go to Laval? Should he stay in Montreal? Should he go back over in Finland and play a year? Uh, when, when you were hearing all that noise, did that affect you in any way? And did you think you were going to start the season here? Or did you think, okay, I'm here, I'll go to training camp, but I'm probably going to go to Laval. What did, what was going through your mind? No, I like, my goal was to stay here and I like love, I, yeah. Cause you, you don't want to go like to AHL cause you l- want to play in NHL. And also it's, it's so much better when you can learn how to play in NHL then in AHL, so yeah, I was, I had my vision that I want to stay here. I want to do everything for it. And yeah, so, luckily it, it happened. Yeah. When you, when you happen. first got on the ice, was it like a big difference in the ice, the size of the ice? I mean, yeah, it's smaller. You have less time. You have yeah, quickness of the reaction and like decision decisions you I made. thought it was like it's, I thought it was like I was like I'm gonna shoot from everywhere that was my myth <laughs> like that's how yeah, small it felt like you know it's crazy yeah, but yeah it's really small yeah, yeah. compared to <laughs> Europe yeah okay if you love your pet like I love my Saint Bernard Adele you'll want to feed them a balanced biologically appropriate raw diet the reason I've chosen formula raw is because all blends of their food are locally sourced and they consist of exclusively human-grade meat and organs, as well as fruits and vegetables. And all products used are hormone and antibiotic-free. So like I said, if you love your pet like I love Adele, you choose Formula Raw. Make sure you go to FormulaRaw.com and use the promo code RAWNUX at checkout to receive 10% off your first order. That's RAWNUX, R-A-W-K-N-U-X. So you have that, certainly, you get a, a lot of adjustments to make when you come over. You're a young kid, you get new, a new city, new language, all those things. Uh, and here you are on the new hockey team, 18 years old. You've been away from home before, no big deal. But now it's the NHL, and you end up staying with the team. And there's still talk, is this the best thing for your eyes? Should he be here but you go ahead and go about your business. What was probably the, for you the biggest surprise about 
this game, this North American game over here, and the biggest adjustment you had to make in your early career here in this first year? I mean, I would just say it's like you have to you play every night against 20 really good players, which when you play in Europe, like some teams are ver like versus there's bigger difference between best teams and like worst teams. So, and yeah. of course here, like you have to perform against best players in the world every day. So that was like, yeah, like, of course you have to get used to it. That there is no like, oh yeah, today we play this team. Like they are easy, uh, game, easy, to, easy game, like, yeah. which in Europe it was like, oh yeah. Like you look at the stats. Okay. They, these guys didn't win past 20 games. Like might be easier to like the game might be easier today, but which, which here it's like, oh yeah, like, oh, we played. This team, but they still have like five great players and then like uh, prospects and everyone. So it's like you always, the game here, it's so much more intense than back in Europe, I would say. Did did the speed of the game surprise you at all? I mean, first, I played first game against New Jersey. I was like, whoa, this is fast. But they <laughs> all, they've been all uh, just like telling me like, oh yeah. It like it will slow down for you and everything, and that it's actually true. Like at the mm -hmm. first, it was yeah, it's, it was really fast, but yeah, then like the game slows down much more. So I watched certainly. I watched you from your first time playing here, and you got going, and uh, you know there were times, and I uh, I'll I'll re talk about the Minnesota hit when that little shit hit you from the side and behind yeah. a little bit when you go on the bench. It looked like, from what I saw, you're on your way to the bench, you kind of relaxed, I'm almost to the bench, and all of a sudden they give you a shot. Did some of those things surprise you? Because it seemed to me there were a few times -ish in your early going where guys, because you're number one pick, you're big, they said, we're going to see if this kid's ready. Did you feel like people were testing you on the other teams? Honestly, I don't even think about it that way. I, I, I think like I think the same as I think. I don't care if I play against first overall pick, and I don't care if I play against whoever. I yeah. want to do everything to win, and if that helps, and yeah, I'll I'll do that. And yeah, at that time I don't even yeah I remember I had like long shoe. I was trying to dump the puck in to go for a change, and I yeah at that time it's like. Kind of surprised me because as well, it's not as physical in Europe and because like you yeah. get suspended. Like for example, mm -hmm. if in Finnish league you drop gloves, you want to fight, you get two game suspension. That's not worth it because you're out of the lineup or anything. So of course, yeah, I mean, it's not that it surprised me. I always ex like expect that someone is coming after you or someone is on the ice that wants to get the puck that you have. But yeah, I, I would just say it's like... Yeah, a rookie mistake. Yeah, yeah. Is there, any, well, is there yeah, anyone yeah, in this... Finland that in that league that would have fought Arbor? <laughs> no. Oh, I don't think so. No, no <laughs> not really. And yeah, Finnish so, league wouldn't be good for Arbor. Yeah, no, it wouldn't be. Uh, the Finnish league would be over with Arbor. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. League. But you know, so that first year, and you know, you had a couple injuries. You had one season-ending injury, and um, you know, it's certainly not not fun to finish your first year injured. But um, did, in, in a sense, did that help you to be able to maybe sit up above and watch a little bit? I know it's difficult because I've been injured before in the NHL and it sucks sitting and watching. But did you, were you able to look at the game a little differently that you weren't playing it? And now I can see some things and maybe learn a few things. Did did it help sometimes sitting up in the stands, looking oh, yeah. down at your teammates? Did you pick up on some things? Oh yeah, you just like, cause in a game you they just tell you what to do. You don't see like what other guys are doing. You don't see like if someone else is also doing what you are supposed to do. And of course, if you watch, it's not about just like watching. Montreal, but there is also other players that from other teams when they come and oh yeah, like I want to watch like also like the other team best players what they are doing and of course oh, it helps a lot and when you talk about it with someone after yeah it, 
help help me and you're always trying to get better and if that's the only way yeah of course we'll do that you, you uh, like using those ipads on the bench because chris loves them <laughs> <laughs> yeah 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 but now i think we have a we have a rule we can use it only during the uh like the those three breaks that they are in because we were watching way okay. too much okay oh yeah nice. right there you go i love yeah. that <laughs> yeah yeah i hate the ipad it's funny the, all the old guys hate the ipad they say take yeah. it <laughs> i hate it i yeah. i honestly i think if a player he'd make a mistake on the ice or he does something he's not sure come back to the bench talk to your teammate get ready for the next shift and if you want to look go between period i always say that with tim i um, but you know, it's, it's certainly a different day than, uh, no question oh, yeah. with iPads mm -hmm. on the bench, but, um, so you look at your season, you end up hurt. I look back at your first goal and I love your first goal. Oh, it was, gosh. it, I remember my first goal, I, it, you know, the puck was laying there. I just poked it in the net. It sucked <laughs> my first goal, but it was my first goal. Mm -hmm. You had a beautiful shot. Um, a great play, but what I love was before it, that kid hit you, you went down and you get back to your feet and then Arbor Jack guy <laughs> went from the red line, he yeah. hit that guy Brown and Brown wasn't sure if he was going to fight him or what and it gave yeah. you more time and the puck comes yeah. to you and Brown was too late coming out and you put it in and you were so freaking happy. Mm -hmm. But I just look at the replay and I see your eyes. You're looking at him. Yeah, fuck you. Uh, how, how happy yeah. were you just to get that first one in the net? It was all over Slapkowski that time, the youngster. Uh, he'll try to move it out. Turn over here. Slapkowski scores! First in the National League. Your eyes, Slapkowski. Uh -huh. Yeah, all this all sequence like it was just so nice and oh, you always want to go score your first one as soon as possible because that gives you a little yeah. more confidence and everything. And if it happens after play like this and like with everything what happened after the goal, oh, yeah, you just get pumped and the, your energy just goes right away high, higher and like, yeah, it's a, yeah, I'm, it was, yeah, great sequence. <laughs> Of yeah, so, Arbor going on four check to the corner and <laughs> destroying the guy. Yeah, yeah. So good yeah. system. They got a good system over there. Yeah, <laughs> that wasn't yeah. the trap. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, that wasn't a trap at all. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, now I can only imagine because I did this for my teammates, right? I stuck up for my teammates. I always did. We had a little Swedish guy, uh, Mats Nasland. You know, I'm sure you yeah. know Mats' his name yeah. from when we play, but. He came from playing in Sweden and he comes over and, you know, a lot of guys would try and take advantage of him. And I know when I was in the lineup and when I helped him, he appreciated it. And I'm sure, and I know I've heard you speak how much you appreciate what Abba had done for you in certain games. You never had to deal with that pot before. You never had fighting over there. I get it. How happy were you when you saw your teammate? you know, come and stick up for you. How, how'd that make you feel? Oh, oh yeah, it just makes you feel good. Like, you know that someone always has your back. And yeah, that's how it's supposed to be in a team. If you want to win, you always need to have someone's back. And yeah, I would be happy to do the same for him. But I I know Arbor doesn't need it. But there is, <laughs> yeah. yeah, other guys. Because I'm also, I have big body. And yeah, why not? Why not to stand up for someone or not even just like, yeah. I loud, loud and yeah. stuff. So, yeah. Yeah, that goes a long way within the team. And certainly, I'm sure you can see, you're not the only guy who benefits from it. A lot of oh, your teammates also, right? They, yeah. They're more confidence in the whole team when he's there, right? Oh, yeah. Even, like, you can, like, do more stuff because, you know, even if something happens, next year, the Darby is getting that guy no matter what. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it really helps. Yeah. So did Even, you actually buy him dinner for sticking up for you? Like I heard, did you have to? Pay, yeah, I bought him. I dinner? bought him so many dinners that it's just on the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, he got so many. I lost too many card games, so he always gets a free dinner. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's great. Oh. So, um, 
So now you're here. You're, you're living in you live in Westmount with a family. You're going to be going back home. Um, when you get back home now from this first season, what's your summer going to be like? Um, you're going to take a little time, family, and then how quickly will you get back into working out? Are you already there? Yeah, I mean, I would. I just keep working close to yeah, him. I I had my like rest when I got injured. I had my like I couldn't do anything for six weeks, so that's like that was my summer break. So I think I'm now I'll just keep going. Of course, you can just train until next season. You need to take like week off in between, but yeah, for from now I'll just yeah keep keep working out and because I'm back on the ice as well. So like I'll keep skating, getting back in the shape and. Once I'm in a shape, I'll, of course, you, yeah, like I said, go somewhere nice for a vacation or something, and, yeah, then just back back to work. And, and when will you come back to Montreal? When will you come back to get ready for the next season? Yeah, I'll, I, I mean, I haven't really, I don't really know the exact date, but I'll come probably like month, month and a half before training camp. So, yeah, I'll be here. I'll be here at least half the summer. Is this the first time you're going back since since a, in a long time? I mean, I no, I went season, back right? home uh, like three weeks ago to graduate from high school. That's kind of funny, you but did. yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's not what that is every hilarious. NHL player goes home for, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> amazing. So, uh, did you while you were here your first year? So your grad, did you take classes while you like were playing this year or to get you? Uh, no, no, no. I yeah, just like trying to study myself and yeah. I I mean I won't test have, online. Yeah, I won't have a best grades either, so yeah, that's all <laughs> good. Yeah. Yeah. High school Knox. Yeah. That's cra- that's Im- really impressive that you're doing all this and now you graduate high school. Like that's that's awesome. Yeah, I have um, to do it for my parents. Yeah, yeah. They wanted me to do it. <laughs> yeah. If it's on me, I would stay here. <laughs> Yeah, it's funny. Um, so you you do uh, you play your first NHL season, um, and you graduate high school. It's incredible when I think of it. But so you you know you go back home, you get your degree, you're gonna come back here in Montreal. Um, year two for you. Now the injury, you're gonna get healthy. You'll be coming back. What um what do you think the expectation is for you? Not from the fan base, but from management, coaching staff. What what are they expecting from uh, your right in year two? I think I would say we have like a process that we are in. Kind 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 of stopped when I got injured. So I I would just say we will just keep keep building my game and like adding adding more more and more stuff. And yeah, like they didn't like say like any like expectation okay you need to like i don't know whatever score 20 goals or something but yeah Mm -hmm. yeah it's just like they want to build my game and to be good to be like best player i can be when we are actually going to playoffs or something in like when we are when montreal canadians will be like on a highest level again yeah um so Young team made lots of changes. They've kind of rebuilt here, and they're going to continue that. There's another draft coming here. When you came here uh, the first time and you sat down in front of that coach, Martin St. Louis, and he talked to all the team, that message he sent, How? In, tell us a little bit how you felt after he spoke and what are some of the things he said about the team. Because every player I've spoken to, just has they they said I've never heard that from any other coach will come out of Marty's mouth. Yeah, and like, it's like what impact did, what impact did that have on you? It's kind of like yeah, because the first time he's like we were in the locker room and he started to talk during like I think it was during the development camp, and you just know yeah. like some of the coaches they are trying to get gain the respect from the guys and they're like I don't know they're doing some other stuff but. As soon as he started talking, like everyone just like, oh, like yeah, like have respect for a guy, and you just just know like how how smart he was, even when he talks during the meetings or anything. Like the way he sees the game, it's just like crazy. Because usually, like even when we have meeting and we talk about something, 
we see like for example three four things he sees like eight different things eight other <laughs> things that we didn't even like whoa like yeah and it actually when you go like you listen to him oh yeah it makes sense like it's not just like something it makes really yeah he's just, not just mm -hmm. talking to talk he yeah. points mm -hmm. things out you learn things yeah oh i learned so much oh yeah like the stuff he says and like it makes you think different about the game and that i think that can help like whole Montreal, every single player on our team a lot yeah um so yeah it's refreshing to see that that new that coach come on the scene because a lot of times the nhl they change they go back to same old coaches yeah. same old coaches that never new guys are coming up and certainly marty i think it's a great thing that you guys have a group now a young good core group of players with a young coach who you guys can grow together and it the certainly the future looks promising it's funny i um i played with a couple of uh i played with a couple of czech players and a couple of slovaks and i tell the story um do you know the name igor liba oh yeah he's like he's <laughs> from koshita yeah <laughs> yeah so so igor liba listen to this you're right i'm playing in new york and igor comes over from Slovakia and he comes to the New York Rangers and he gets in, he can't speak any English at all. And he, he was uncomfortable. And anyway, I brought him to my house for dinner with his wife and his child. And, you know, he couldn't talk any English. Yeah. I couldn't talk any, <laughs> and we were making sign language and we had dinner and he, he, he so appreciated it. Right. So he was there for 10 games. And we were just getting ready to go out for a game. And Phil Esposito, the general manager, came in and he said, Chris, you got to come here. I made a trade. I traded Igor Liba to L.A. And I'm trying to tell him he has to go to L.A. because I traded him. <laughs> he said, will you come and talk to him? The only one he'll talk to is you. So I come out in the hall and I say, Igor, buddy, I'm sorry, but you got traded. You know, you have to go to L.A. And Phil said, yeah, Igor, you have to go to L.A. You, he said, you're going to play with Gretzky. And Igor oh. goes, fuck Gretzky. Me want to play with Knuckles. <laughs> and I'm telling you, Phil was like, he, he's like, what, what am I going to do to convince this guy that, you know, he's got to go. But go he finally did. But what he was such a good guy. It felt so yeah. bad for him because, you know, it's hard enough to come over here. Mm hmm and, and people don't realize that yeah and unless you like tim went to russia right and yeah. when you first go to russia what's that adjustment when you can't speak that language yeah like people don't realize that it's low you can get it, yeah can it could be lonely like it's like you know talk about wanting to go home you know but yeah. uh yeah i can't imagine what you, yeah no that was it's it's good on you to do the be you know come over here yeah. and do that. What are some things you like to do outside away from hockey? You a video game guy? You like to golf, uh, fish? Yeah, I I yeah I do play video games with. Now we had few injured players, so we were we had some time, <laughs> so we were all playing together. Yeah, it's kind of funny. Sometimes we had way too many guys to play, and someone yeah. just had to stay out. <laughs> yeah, yeah, way too many guys this year. Um. So, teammates. How about teammates? Who are your favorite teammates? Some of the, some of those. I mean, I mean, I'm sure you love all your teammates, yeah. but do you have some guys you're closer to? Yeah, I, I would just say like all like the rookies that we are in a team, like kind of like because we came same time. Like we were when like all the older guys were talking to each other. We were all the rookies, like oh yeah, like a little shy <laughs> and everything. But yeah, during like the season, of course, you start to talk to older guys as well, and yeah. Yeah, but of course, like Arbor, Ghouls, and all those guys. Yeah. yeah. That, a I, lot of good young players. Yeah. You having fun? How about, like, the, so, how, what do you think of, like, the whole, like, uh, how the NHL treats you? You know, like, you fly on the planes and the hotels, and then oh. you go back and graduate high school? I think this is, that's amazing. <laughs> you, like, the, yeah. There's no like, one in your high I, school you... that can relate. <laughs> go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. that's true. I mean, all the NHL, how it works and how it's how you just have to play hockey nothing else because everything yeah. else is taken care of that's yeah, yeah it's really it's it's just a different level than any, anywhere else in the world so 
I really, I really enjoy my time everywhere on the road trips, everywhere. You get to see so, all, all the cities. Yeah. Rice restaurants, everything. <laughs> right. How about Montreal, though? You like this city? Certainly, I, I think for Europeans to come, it's it's an easy ad adjustment. I think in a city like this than maybe an American city or even another Canadian city because Montreal is different than the rest. But how much do you like the city? One and um, um, have you been having to keep the girls away from you here in this? <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I love Montreal. Like, there is, yeah, so many like good restaurants and everything. It's yeah, it's it wasn't it wasn't as hard for me to adjust for like Montreal's lifestyle. Yeah, I, yeah. I just enjoy my time here and spend time That's with awesome. all the teammates and everyone. Yeah. You know any French? You learn and any keeping French? the girls away. And keep the yeah, no, yeah. No, no, I'm <laughs> not. Not yet, I just know merci beaucoup, bonsoir, and all. But yeah, but yeah, I'll work on it. It will be there. It will be there. You need it in here. Now, you could speak, you speak Slovak. What other languages could you speak before? Just Slovak? Because a lot of Europeans, I always said, a lot of European people, they can speak two, mm -hmm. three languages. No problem. No, like, I, Did, yeah, I speak Slovak, I speak English, understand Finnish, and, but there's yeah. like... We understand Czechs, but it doesn't count as, as the same. Yeah, so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that, when you talk about the Czechs, it doesn't count as the same. I get it. But how's that rivalry there between the Czechs and the Slovaks? Like, that's got to be, like, yeah. crazy rivalry. You look at, you know, uh, Chara, right? The Stasnys. Yeah. All the guys, like, I know. But. And then you look at the other side, you look at Placanic and Svoboda, the guy I played with back in the day. Peter Svoboda played for the Canadians, right? He was with the Czech national team uh, in the World Junior, and he defected back at 18 years old. Can you imagine, like, here you are, 18 years old, coming to Montreal, yeah. but you can come. That time, he, he left the World Junior Championship. He went up. He got in a cab and took off. He went and got on a plane and flew to Montreal. Like, imagine at 18 That's, years old having to I do can, that. Yeah, I can't even imagine, like, because it was different world back in the days. Like, everything was harder to get and, like, harder to do. And so, yeah, today it's so easy for us. Yeah, you just get on the first plane that flies to Montreal. And yeah. here in Montreal, the car picks you up, brings you home. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, you don't even have to deal. You get your flying ticket to email, like, oh, yeah, I have to fly that day. Okay. Yeah, the car will be there waiting. Oh, perfect. Yeah. So, yeah. How, how many siblings? Do you have brothers and sisters? Yeah, I have one younger sister. Yeah. One younger sister. So did mom and dad come over this year to see you play? Did they, uh, yeah, were yeah. they here for a little bit? Or? Yeah, my mom was here for like ten days once, and yeah, my yeah my dad came like three, four times. So of course, he came for the first oh, game. That's and awesome. Yeah, so he was there. I like I always I I'm in touch with them pretty much every day. So yeah, it's it's well, really good. good. Yeah, you can FaceTime all the time. Yeah, it's yeah. great the technology now. You can yeah. speak to each other, and well, that's good. And you're gonna go home. So, what what are some of your hobbies? Do you golf? Do you fish? What do you do other than hockey? I mean, I would I'd just say, like, I just spend time with my friends. Whatever my friend group does, if we just go, I don't know, swim some. Like, I don't golf yet. Not yet. Yeah. But, yeah. Yet. Pretty, yeah, pretty much, yeah. I just try to spend time with family and my buddies. Because it's not like you have a whole year at home. You just have two, three months, and it flies by. So you just try to, yeah, meet everyone and have a good time with everyone. You got whatever, golf courses in Slovakia? Doing. Do you have a golf courses back home? Because in Russia, they had zero. I couldn't find any. Yeah, we, we have we have a few, not as many as here, but we have, a, yeah. oh, we have, a, in Košice, I think there's like one around, but we, when you go <laughs> to mountains and like uh, higher, mm -hmm. like different cities, more to, closer to Bratislava, then you have more. So... All those young guys coming in at the same time. I got to ask you about this guy because I have, I think everybody loves him. Like, this is a great city. If you come and you play hard and you show up every night, people just, they love their hockey. They love their Montreal Canadiens. 
But this guy, Cole Caulfield, always got the big smile. Always, yeah. Like, like how is how is that playing with a guy like Cole? He just seems like he's in the locker room that everybody loves him. He's always going. Yeah, he's always How's going he as a teammate. He, yeah, I mean, great teammate. And first of all, great teammate. Second of all, really, really good player. And, right. Yeah, and mm-hmm. like, and it's just fun because usually, like, when you see like all those like best players, they are not like Cole, but Cole is different, yeah. and I think that's what makes him like good as well. Because yeah, he always smiles. He's always in the middle of every everything <laughs> that is happening in the locker room or something. You just know like. What, if something is happening somewhere, you just know Cole will be there, and it's just like, yeah, it's yeah, it's funny, funny little guy. I, I really who's, like who's him, the yeah. funniest teammate? Is, is he the funniest teammate, or who's the funniest teammate? Oh, funniest teammate, Sean Monahan. Oh, oh man, really? We heard that. No we one heard would Wyden say. I was thinking times, Weidman. Couple, yeah, a couple oh, of times. Oh, Weidman, of course, Weidman. Weidman. But like, I, <laughs> if I get to pick like different, like something, of course, everyone picks Chris, like. Of course, Cole and everyone, but he's like quiet guy on like in front of you. Don't listen, you don't hear about him as often, but <laughs> he, yeah, he can say some stuff and he has great stories. And yeah, he lives, he awesome. used to, and he lived like two streets away from me, from me in Westmount, so it's perfect. Oh, okay, that's cool. Good. So that's awesome. It's Good making stuff. me miss playing Crip Nux. Like, oh, you'll yes, have to come back know? and play, Tim. No, there you go. <laughs> yeah. So, well, go over to Russia and play. They'll yeah. we'll gladly yeah. have you back, right? I don't know who yeah. the funniest Russian was. I, I couldn't talk to yeah. him, so I had no yeah. idea. <laughs> yeah. So um, I'm going to ask you, someday, with this group of kids and the next one's coming, are, are you, are you going to be able to bring a, a Stanley Cup back to this city? I'm going to ask you. You oh, think yeah. in your lifetime you're gonna bring a Stanley Cup here? Yeah, I'm. Yeah, pretty confident. Like, yeah, it's like people. I people in Montreal they think it's gonna happen next year or in. Yeah, but like if they're a little patient. I know it's been so many. Like, yeah, what thirty years or it's, it's yeah, a long time. It's been a long but time. Mm-hmm. It'll come back. Oh, for sure. With this group of guys, just and like with all the stuff and everything, like just needs to be together and we need more experience and I'm sure there will be some good playoff runs for our team. I know that's, I know that was a pretty big question for you in the expectation, certainly, but I like what I see here. I love to see Mm -hmm. that young core and I'm sure you guys grow together. They're going to add to that core. Uh, There's a lot of potential here and you guys, I just hope that one day, because certainly I, I was part of one of those, and it was the highlight of my career. It, nothing else came close to it. So, yeah, I like, guess what I'm saying for you, I wish for you, and in, in your group of guys, that you're able to do that together. I really, you, you, you will. I guarantee you, you will have the time of your life like you don't know here in this city. Oh, to bring that standard. I'm, I'm sure. Here. Like guys are over like we. Of course, we talk about that that we want it. So. <clears throat> It, Who like, do you think's gonna win this year? Who do you think's winning this year? It's kind of hard. I, I would say there's mm-hmm. like few teams that can win. Let's let's get surprised. So, yeah, I just <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's few good teams on West Coast, like West West Side. So mm-hmm. I don't know. I mean, yeah, can't say it. Can't say <laughs> anything. Have you to don't keep have quiet. to. Yeah. I I I think. I think Boston's going to win it. Tim thinks Boston's going to win it. I think yeah. Edmonton and Boston will be in the final. You don't have to say it. We respect yeah. that. You're right. No problem. But I do want to ask you a couple questions, okay? Either or, okay? Yeah. So, Instagram or Twitter? Instagram. Instagram. Okay. Um, Android or iPhone? iPhone. Uh, boxer shorts or ball huggers? <laughs> boxer shorts. <laughs> yeah. Okay, no ball huggers. Good for no. you. Um, <laughs> blondes or brunettes? Both. 
But hey, <laughs> 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 whatever. <laughs> I, I said either or. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Brunettes. Um, brunettes. <laughs> All right, brunettes. Um, uh, Burger King or McDonald's? Mm, McDonald's, probably. Yeah. yeah. McDonald's. Okay. Um, there is not so many um, Burger Kings in Slovakia. So. No. There is McDonald's. I think that's why. <laughs> no, we went at- there is McDonald's. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, wine or beer? Beer. Beer. Okay. Check beer. Um, yeah. <laughs> check beer. <laughs> um, um, texting or calling? Oh, calling. Oh. Calling, calling right? yeah. yeah. That's funny. A lot of kids today rather text, mm-hmm. right? Oh, it just takes Tim? too long. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Some yeah. people just don't want to talk on the yeah. phone. They're no. like, last thing I want to do. They're scared. Yeah. Dri- when, dri- when you drive around, everyone, in, like you see over here, everyone's just texting and driving. It's nuts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, <laughs> let's see. A um, couple more quickies. How about, um, oh, yeah, um, a sports car? Or a pickup truck? Sports car. Okay. Yeah. Sports car. For sure. Pickup truck, that's a redneck thing. You're not redneck. No, Arbor <laughs> wouldn't let me buy that with his collection. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, orange juice or apple juice? Ooh, that's a tough one. Apple juice. Okay. And we're going to finish on this one. Montreal girls or Slovak girls? Ooh. That's an easy one. You Slo- can't say both. <laughs> Slovak girls all day oh, long. Nice. Oh, wow. I like Woo. that. I like that. He's yep. staying right in his neighborhood. And Kochitsi girls. <laughs> Kochitsa oh. girls. Yeah. Kochitsa <laughs> girls. Yeah. Listen, um, you're right. I, listen, thank you so much for joining us. I, I just think you're an awesome kid. You're you, you got a bright future ahead of here in Montreal, and I just uh, I'm happy you're part of this organization, and uh, I wish you nothing but the best in your future here. And just I want to see you, just I want to see yeah. you light it up and have a great career. Yeah. Really, yeah, thanks. thanks, thanks, Yuri. What's the first thing, real quick? What's the first thing you're gonna eat when you get home? You eat schnitzel? Is that big? That you, you eat? Schnitzel? Yeah, schnitzel with like a pot- mayonnaise potato salad. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's yeah. so good. <laughs> yeah. Um, Hey, everyone, thanks for listening to the Raw Knuckles podcast. Don't forget to like, follow, and subscribe.